Hi. So it's Hi. so lovely to speak with you. I am very excited for this upcoming season. Um, I have to say I'm very excited for the guest appearances from Z-Way. We have Chloe Feynman. I was wondering what it was like, um, you know, preparing and like researching for those characters because they do very much fit like what you're going for, I guess. I mean, Billy Eichner is amazing. Um, yeah, we 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 were so lucky to have these awesome guest stars, and um, the 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 Z Way um, experience is 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 sort of the um, most fun to tell because Z Way was actually in our writers' room, um, and which which was over Zoom in a pandemic. So I had the the pleasure of um, <laughs> of of just getting to, to to Zoom chat with Z Way every every day for qu quite a you know a few months in the summer of 2020 as the world was sort of falling falling apart around us. Um, and we didn't know then that Z-Way's Instagram show, Baited, would become um, a Showtime show. And that, you know, we, we, we had decided that she would play Sojourner Truth, but we didn't know she'd be one of our biggest celebrity guest stars that we ever had. So that was really fun. Um, and then uh, Billy joining us as Walt Whitman was also amazing um, because, you know, Walt Whitman is probably the most important sort of celebrity guest star that we've had on the show in terms of what he means in the context of the literary canon to Emily Dickinson. Um, you know, Dickinson and Whitman are the two great American poets and for them to actually get to meet and go to a Civil War hospital followed up by a night at a wild gay club that is based on a real place called Foff's Beer Cellar that was um, a, a you know queer nightclub on the Bowery that Whitman um, frequented during those years. Um, it was just such a, a wild ride and, and I can't imagine anyone better at leading us on that journey than Billy. And what is it like researching, I mean, there's obviously so much research that goes into it. How do you even begin to choose what you're going to include in the episodes? It's funny that, um, you know, I think that there's a quote I've heard somewhere, which is about like, creativity is all about choices, right? And um, making the choices of what to include, whether it's who are we going to meet, which poem are we going to use, um, you know, what, what, um, what dress is Emily going to be wearing? You know, what time, like what season is it when, when the show takes place? This is how, um, these are the choices we have to make to tell the story and, and, and create the meaning that we want to convey, um, to the audience. So yeah, I mean, the work is in the choices for sure. And do you ever feel any pressure to balance the humor with the seriousness because those are both such great aspects of the show that I enjoy is you're able to just move from one moment to the next. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the thing is that humor is um, a coping mechanism. Humor is a way of handling and healing from and moving through dark and painful stuff. And so um, I think that, you know, the darkness and the light are completely interconnected and um, that is why you know there's there's humor to be found in Emily's poems. There's always there's always something that um, some way of sort of telling the truth, but telling it slant. You know, looking at things differently. Um, that that I take inspiration from her in doing so. And you guys took a lot of inspiration from the pandemic, obviously. How much of your own experience was infused into your writing? So much. Um, I, you know, I spent the, the entire time of writing season three, I was, it was the very beginning of the pandemic and I found myself unexpectedly like trapped in, in away from home. Um, it, it wasn't where I expected or wanted to be. It was really difficult. We, I was literally working in a basement um, over Zoom, uh, meeting with writers, some of whom I'd never actually met in person before. Um, and really watching as the whole country was was facing a kind of shock and trauma that you know none of us had ever lived through before, which is you know uh, a, a lot of what it was like for Emily and her family to live through the Civil War. Um, you know the Civil War was also an unprecedented moment when um, death started happening on 
a kind of scale and in a way that no one had ever experienced before. And it really changed America's relationship with death and grief and mourning. Um, and all of that has been built into the show from the beginning. You know, I, I um, you know, from the very first episode um, where Emily meets death in the carriage and he tells her that a war is coming. Um, you know, so so there was a lot of um, full circle to it and sort of like I'd always known we were going to go there, but I didn't know we would be going there in a pandemic. And what's the most exciting part for you? I mean, what what's your most exciting episode that you are, um, I guess, wanting people to see? Well, I mean, I, I, I obviously, you know, have put my heart and soul into every one of these episodes and every one of them um, I'm, I'm excited for people to see and I think is unique and, and beautiful. Um, I did get to direct the final episode. And so I think that, you know, <clears throat> that was a really exciting moment for me to, to flex those muscles and, 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 you know, really just lead the whole cast and crew to the finish line of this amazing journey. So I'm excited for people to get all the way through it and get to see that finale.